Hello guys and uh, welcome to today's video where I'm going to uh, uh, demonstrate and show you how you can uh, set up your own uh, environment to uh, to prepare for the Red Hat uh, certification uh, version 8. Okay, so for that, um, we are going to use Vagrant. Vagrant, Ansible, and VirtualBox, all right? And this will be auto-generated. So we are going to have a setup auto-generated so that we can just log into the server and perform most of the tasks that we, we want. So without further ado, uh, we'll just go ahead and uh, start. But before we start, please consider subscribing uh sharing liking or disliking uh, comment as well and uh, yeah share with other people who needs this because i know there are so many people who needs to uh, do the red hat exam and they don't have any way to do it because they don't have the information so i'm going to make your life easier to do it all right so what we are going to do today is a document while i was making my research I found a document uh, on GitHub that I'm going to show you. And that document is really helpful because it helps you to do the automation of your, your deployment and to automate the deployment of your servers that you are going to work on it. So let me go on on this. So when I come here, when I come here, I will type, um, Sorry about this. Yep, I will come here and then start uh, something. So what I'm going to do is to type, um, go to my, uh, to my GitHub account because I already forked the project. You can do the same if you want. So that the link to that will be, uh, will be available in the description of this video. You can just click on the description and you will see that. Now we type GitHub. Mm -hmm. So I go to my account and uh, here is my account. You can see some of the stuff that I already have and uh, yeah, my achievement and all those stuff. So here, so here is, uh, here is that, right? So if you click here, for example, on my account, uh, let me go to the original link because I didn't produce this. Uh, I just discovered it and seems like you can reuse it without any problem. So that's why I, that's why I, so here it is. You can see that I forked it from rg.break, red hat, uh, RHCSA8 environment. So if I click on that, it's going to be the same thing like the one on my account, but I prefer to do it from here, okay? Now, here from that, let me increase this so you can have a better view. Here from that, uh, you can see the description in the readme.markdown uh, file. So you can see here, they say what? RHCSA 8 automated practice deployment. Okay. So this is gonna be the title of the, of the video, but I take it from here. Powered by Ansible and Vagrant. Okay, Vagrant is the Ashikop uh, tool that they have. Uh, and Ashikop is also the, the, the same the same uh, corporation that has uh, Terraform and other object and other automation tool that you know. So here's the guy who has it, who has it, okay? So here's the guy. So here, installation, and for the installation, they have a different, different operating system on which you can work. You see here, they have Mac OS, which is very suitable for me because I have a, Mac OS, and here they have for CentOS, Realm, Manjora, and Arch Linux. So here it is, all right? And it's pretty straightforward, doesn't require any 
any other stuff you just run you just run those commands and you have it up and running and uh, here windows fedora all right for windows and fedora we can just run these commands here and all those steps are pretty the same here is for debian and ubuntu all right so all these are pretty much the same and they recommend to use desktop uh, github desktop okay to make pulling down changes uh, to make pulling down easily because uh every once in a while they're gonna there are people who encounter issues and they have to update the document so without further ado these are the information that you need so without further ado what we will do is we are going to run to run this right so if it's too hard for you i'm going to show you how to do it and here you can see all the stuff that uh, this configuration includes all right so all what you are going to do how to access the environment and uh, uh, some of the setups and if you don't if you find any if you have any issue please check here first so i'm not promoting this all right because i don't even know this guy i'm just i just appreciate what he did and i'm really grateful for that and uh, that's why i made my contribution as well to by solving a problem that was there so if you have any problem you can check here or come here to a pull request and see some of the pull requests that they did so i'm gonna come come back here right so to get this all right you have to either download the file okay you can either download the file the zip file which is this or do that with uh github desktop or even do so uh, an easy an easier way right which is the the git the github um the the git repository to clone it all right or if you want before cloning it you can fork it here all right you can fork the project here and give it a start i didn't give that yet let me give it just uh okay the require my username and password so i'm gonna put my details all right so i'm gonna give it because when someone does something that is good you have to appreciate that all right so even the even here now uh i was saying that here uh the first thing that you, you want to do is to go to your terminal depending on which terminal that you have for me i have a i have a mac os all right mac os so i will bring this terminal and for now you can see that here i don't have any red hat stuff that uh is being running any machine that is being running but after doing this process, we are going to, to see. So the first thing that you need to do, if you're a Mac machine like me, just type, uh, let me increase this size, the size of this thing. So if you are on a Mac machine like me, just type uh, brew, all right, update first to update your system so that you can have to update your packages so that you can have the latest packages uh, available on your machine. That's the first thing that you need to do, all right? Yeah, and uh, as you can see on my side, everything seems to be, to be good, right? Everything seems to be good because I have the update, updated uh, task, I have everything that is updated already. So I will now do this. And after that, you have to install GitHub. Um, yeah, Git, I mean, <laughs> sorry about that. So you have to install Git. So you do brew, install, Git, okay? And you type enter. So here, here's a warning, right? A yellow warning it doesn't mean something is bad 
So here you can see that they say git 2.34.1 is already installed and up to date. All right. To reinstall, to install it, type brew reinstall git. So this is fine. That means I have git already and I can even check it by typing git dash dash version. Oh, I mean, uh, and you can see that. Now, after that, I have to clone that repository, all right? So let me go ahead and copy the repository. So here you click on code. And if you are on my channel, uh, on my uh, page, you can just uh, click on the, the project as well and then click on code. So here I click on code, right? Copy, code, copy. Then after that has been copied in the clipboard, I go to my, go back to my terminal. And then here I will type, uh, let me paste it on, on a Mac is command V. All right. So control A to go at the beginning of the line. And then I will do git clone. All right. I think I will make some video on git, on git as well, but for now, Let's just take it like this. So git clone and I do this. So once I do that, I will do ls and you can see that right here, right? It has been downloaded. So how do you know it has been downloaded? So you can see here, that is the name of the package with dot git, the extension. And once you download it, once you clone it, you can see that here, it will be like this. So this is a confirmation that I have it, all right? But this is not where we should do it because there is a recommendation of how to do it. So what we are going to do is to delete it, all right? RM dash RF, I was just showing you how to, how to do it. Now they recommend creating a bin file, a bin directory. All right. So if I go to their website and and I come here for the Mac machine, so basically I can run this command at once, and everything will be set up for me. All right. But that's not what I want to do right now. Okay. That's not what I want to do right now. I want to go to the step-by-step -step one. So here is what they recommend. So you install Vagrant first. So you can do brew cast install Vagrant. All right. So let's do that first. I almost forgot this. So I do command C to copy, then go back here and type here. This one you can do anywhere. Okay. I will paste the command and i will run this and as you can see here is a here is an error okay the error is what brewcast install vagrant they say on no command cast so here that cast that cask you have to remove it either type it like this or i think they also say you can do like this that if it doesn't work, we will just remove it. And looks like it, it works, right? Or you can just remove it. So as you can see, they say Vagrant is already installed, okay? Because I already did it. I prepared myself before doing the, the video. So now that it is installed, let's go to the next step. Here now they say we have to install the Vagrant underscore Ansible plugin. So let me do that. So that's the command to do it. All right. So it's a command that will invoke the Ansible command. All right. It's not like you are going to install Ansible. So if I type it, installing, this can take a few minutes. All right. So let it go. All right. They say what? <clears throat> Fetching Vagrant install um, Vagrant dash guest underscore Ansible. Install the Vagrant plugin. 
the vegan uh, the vagrant dash guess underscore ansible zero dot zero dot four. So means it is going through. Now let's go to the next step. They say install the latest version of of a uh, virtual box, right? So I will come here, copy this, and then come here and put it. But as you may know already, we have to remove this, right? I already VHR box, I already have it, but uh, it worth it to, to show you how to, to install it. So I'm doing this and let's say what, brew update pre-install. Yep, no changes to formulae. Yeah, they discovered that I have virtual box already installed. In your case, it will go through. It doesn't, if you are on a Windows machine, open your Mac and your Mac machine, and that's where you are going to do it, okay? That's where you are going to do it. But uh, for the clone and all those stuff, you have to download uh, GitHub desktop on the Windows machine. So I will continue and here, we have to install the, the virtual box uh, extension pack, all right? That gives you some advanced feature. So here, I put that, and as you know, we have to remove this guy here, right? And put it somewhere here. You can, you can decide to remove it and just run the command like that. So it's already installed, okay? And I can show you that. So if you come here, you go to VHR box, you go to preferences, and you go to extension, you will see that being installed here. So if I remove it now, and I try to install it again to run that command, it will auto automatically install it here, okay? Yeah, Vagrant is really powerful. I couldn't realize that until I, I tested myself. <laughs> All right, so now the next step is what? The next step is, once the above software is installed, uh, do the following if you are running the Mac environment. If you are running the environment on Mac. So on my case, I'm doing that on Mac, okay? Okay, they, they say what? Create a separate, uh, um, slash bin directory, your home directory, slash bin directory, because this represents your home directory, okay? Directory and CD to it. And then they say here, the directory doesn't have to be this, okay? It can be anything you want. So you can give any name, but for convention, I'm gonna stick with what they are, they are saying, okay? So let me, so if you see, I have it here already, all right? So let me just remove it, okay? So I'm gonna remove it and create it back, okay? They say in your home directory. So if you see this, it means that you are already in your home directory. So you don't need to create the directory like this, all right? You don't need to do this again like this and then put the name of the directory. You can simply type like this, but if you are elsewhere in your system, you have to you have to do it that way. So I will type like this, and then they, they are recommended to CD into it, right? CD into bin. Now if I do LL, oh sorry, it doesn't recognize that. <laughs> LS dash L, you can see that I have nothing for now. So now after doing that, they say run this command to clone the environment report to you to it with this, okay? So I will copy that and then come here. So I'm inside the directory. You can type PWD and see that you are inside your directory, all right? So now I will paste it and then run the command. And you can see that it went pretty fast, okay? It went pretty fast. Now, after I do this again, I have this, okay? So I have that directory. Now that I have that directory, it's time for me to discover the next step. So they say, once you do that, you change the directory to it. 
you run this command, vagrant up to deploy the environment. If the environment has a design, a designated uh, repo VM, it will take the longest to, to deploy the first time only. Uh, this is because the repo uh, system has all the packages available to the base release, but will be quicker on subsequent deployment. What does it mean is that if you install, if you do the Vagrant up the first time, it will go online trying to, uh, on the Vagrant uh, repository, try to get the right image for you, okay? And then, and then download it, make some uh, pre-configuration and all those stuff. So this installation can take around 15 to 20 minutes. So you have to be patient, okay? All right. So now that we did that, let's go and type Vagrant up. All right. So before we type Vagrant up, I would like to um, I would like to explain what is inside the directory. Okay. So I will do CD to that directory, and then after that, after doing that CD, we will come back here. All right. We come back. So I will do CD like this to go into that directory. And after we are we have finished to explore the directory, I will type cd dot dot to go back. All right. So let me do it now. You can just type uh tab and it will go, it will auto complete because it's the only directory there. So here, if you see very well, ls dash lf. If you see very well, let me do that with this so that I can have the color. Yep. So if you see very well, we have a playbook here, directory, all right? We had a vagrant file, we had a license, we had a readme as you saw from the. So if you cannot follow the documentation over there, you can follow through this readme, all right? We had a vagrant, uh, the vagrant, um, vagrant, uh, um, vagrant file. So you know what? I think it's gonna be easy for us to do that through Visual Studio Code. So let me back, all right? So I will type VS, uh, supposed to be VS Code, right? <laughs> okay, so it's not a big deal. I will go here, all right? And I will type Visual Studio Code. So I have it installed already. You can also do the same by installing it on your system. Because here, I don't think it's good. It's really preventable that way. So I think here is gonna be really easy. Um, so I will come to file on top there. And then open folder. So I wanna open a folder. And uh, if I type on command up, command up again, nope, I can see it. Uh, uh, nope. Uh, uh, where is it? I'm looking for the directory that has it, and I can, um, and uh, I can see that I was uh, using the wrong command because I went online and typed code uh, how to open uh, a directory with VS Code. They say code. I was typing VS Code. So we are going to close the S code again. Okay. And then open this here by typing like this. And it is not working. Wired, right? <laughs> uh, I think while I was installing that, I got some problem, but okay. So we are going to exploit from here if it's not working. 
control C. I'm going for to explore it from here. So I will do ls go to the directory and then ls you can see here that I have all those directory. So if I go to uh, cd to vagrant that's capital V. Oh, uh, no, that's not, uh, I meant cat. Okay, we cannot see the tree directory. If I do that, you will see some of the pre configuration that it has. Okay, that directory has. has. So you can see, you can see all those stuff. All right, it's doing a lot of stuff. So here is where I type the cat command. Okay, and here's the result of that. You can see even the API and all those stuff that it, it is trying to do, configuring the IP addresses and all, all other requirements. You can see. All right, so <clears throat> now that's the configuration file of Vagrant. Now we have another one, Vagrant uh, Ansible dot config no um what is that yeah right here the playbook cd to playbook you will see all the stuff that it is going to do the welcome message is going to be here the server to create the first the second server the first server uh to reset the server the repository server and all those stuff so Without further ado, you can explore that on your own. I'm just going to run that famous vagrant up. So I will do cd back back and then do the grain up. Okay. So like I say, you can take from 15 to 20 minutes. So just be patient. So you can see here that it is trying to do something on my virtual box. So you see, bringing machine server to up with VirtualBox provider. You can see that even the repo server it is doing that as well. The server one, it is doing that as well. So we create three servers, all right? Exactly as the RAD exam, I think. Okay. So um we'll come back when once this is finished okay so let me pause on the recording first oh we have this problem okay so having this problem it's something that is not really good for any person who is trying to deploy his environment and sees a video that is running perfectly because there were videos that were running perfectly and I decided to make mine because I discovered this problem. This is the reason why I made, I'm making this uh, video. So once you have this problem, they are giving some detail here, some details, but if you are not really well, um, well uh, get used to this, you will not uh, see how to do it. You can see here they say IP address configure for the host only network is not within the allow range. Please update the, update the address you used to be within the allow ranges and run the command again. So here's the address that they, they say we have to, to put within the range. I think you listen very well, the address. And here's the range, the current range that it has, okay? The default configuration. But the address itself is this one. So we have to allow it to be in the range that the grain will understand. Now here, valid ranges can be modified in the slash etc vbox uh, networks.com file. For more information, including valid format, see this, okay? So you can go to this website, let's go there. All right, so you can go to this website of virtual box and right here, I think my network is a bit uh, slow today. Don't know why. 
So we just give it a second, please. And as you can see, they say here, that's the section that is uh, involved. And they can, they, they say that, okay, I want to save you the time to read all through this. And you can see here, they say, go into your file. All right. Go into your file and put something like this. If you want to put this range. Okay. And they say, they give some more details here. So here, till here, if you try to do like them, it's going to be really, it's not going to be a, a really good experience to you. All right. So uh, I solved this issue and here is how I did it. All right. So that's why I'm going to go back to my repository. So I'm going back to my repository and here, here is my account. So after doing that, following all those steps. So let me go back to my account. I click on my account here. After doing that, uh, I open an issue, right? I open an issue and you can see the issue that I solve here. So when using Vagrant command, I can, uh, when using Vagrant command, I came across an annoying message, which uh, which I don't want others to encounter, okay? So here's the exact same message that we have, all right? And here's where is that message. So, so the way to tackle this problem in my case was to create the, the directory, this, okay? So you can see that here, they say we have to put that to create this file into this directory and put this range, all right? So if we do cd to, uh, to slash etc slash uh, vbox, all right? You see that if I try to autocomplete, it doesn't go through. So I have to create it, all right? Sorry, vbox. So for that, since it's a, since it, it's a, um, since it's a, it's an etc directory, which is uh, only for the root user. I will use sudo since my user has that privilege and then type make the And I will have to put my password. And boom, it has been created. Now, if I do cd again to, let me just call this. So if I do CD again, you see now I'm able to go inside. Now we have to create that, that file, okay? This file here, because that file doesn't exist. We just create, just create the, created the, the directory. So the file doesn't exist yet. Now we copy that and do a touch on it, okay? And type enter. So I got permission denied, no problem. The way to solve it is to type sudo. Nice. Now I have that file. But from my experience, if you go into that file with the with uh, your regular user, even if you use a sudo command, it won't work. So I will do sudo dash i to uh, to connect directly to the to my root account. Now I will. Um, I will move to that directory with the vim or nano command. So depending on what you like to use, me, I like to use a uh, vim. Now we paste that and type this, all right? So once I'm here, here is my, the output of what I put there, all right? So what I did was to create that, that directory, creating the file and then put this range, all right? That's the IP address. So you see, here's the message. So here is the IP address that they say, we have to put that into the range. And the way to do that is by, uh, by addressing the networking, uh, the networking part, and then put the slash 24. So here you can see the star, okay? So we have to put star. So meaning we are, uh, we are allowing all the IP addresses in this range, all right? 
So that's what I did. And then I typed the command again and it ran successfully. All right. So what we are going to do now is kind of do the same thing. So type I to insert, then star, and you put 192.168.55.0 slash 24. So let's just uh, make sure it's the same thing. Yep, 192.168.155. Don't put this 15551 because it's already an IP address in that range. You should put the networking uh part okay so that's what i'm doing and then save all right so to save you type shift zz okay you type escape first to get out of the insert mode and then type shift zz and then it will it will save or you can type uh shift colon and then wq to quick you type enter so after doing that i'm going to run that Vagrant command again. All right. So let me get out this of this uh of this account now. Uh, don't log out. Now I'm gonna type vagrant up again. Okay. And let's see what vagrant environment or target machine is required to run this command. The vagrant in it to create. Oh, environment, yeah, 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 they are right, they are right. So we type CD dash, and I will go back to this, yeah. So we were not in the proper directory. You remember that we did the CD. Yeah, you have to type, uh, or you go to this. So you type like this to go there, to go back there, and then you can run the command back again. <clears throat> now, let, let it take off, okay? Let it take off. All right, now you see that that ugly message is not there anymore. So it's, called, it's, going, it's going through. Like I say, it's gonna take uh, from 15 to 20 minutes. And let's see what we have. Oh, it has created something already here, you see? And we have some host only adapter here. So it's going through, it's gonna, it's gonna, uh, Power on those server on itself is going to create two more of them. All right. So I'm going to pause on the recording and then resume after it, it has done. Apparently now it's done. And we can see the result here uh, being displayed. Here's that uh, welcome message. And if you go through those files, you will see that uh, that message. This is uh, the playbook from Ansible, right? Yep, it's very nice. So we did a lot of stuff, you see? So that's why you had to give it some time to complete, okay? As it was installing, updating, upgrading, a lot of stuff behind the scene. So you can see here what we have on each of those servers have been doing amazingly. Yep, so here's where we type the command, if you remember, all right? And here is what we have. All right, now let's go and take a look at the, <clears throat> sorry about that. Let's go and take a look at the, oops, sorry. <laughs> I forgot to, to put on my, my light. Okay, let's go and take a look at the uh, virtual box. Oops, nope, yep, all right here. So here you can see now, earlier we didn't have this, right? And now we can see that we have three servers. And looking at, looking at those three servers, the first thing that we say is the recommendation, right? So according to what I'm seeing, right? I will tell you to have you can see here we have two gig of RAM, right? And two processor, um, what else? A disk, right? You can see here we have uh, some disk, uh, disk space 3288. 
this is only for one. So here is 16 plus, plus uh, 32, which is 48, right? So you can see that we have 48 gig of storage here. Now let me go on the other one. So this is server two, this is, server, uh, this is the repo server and this is the server one. So let me go on the other one. <clears throat> On the other one, we have a RAM of one gig, two processor as well. So we have four processor already. And this one has only 32. 32 plus 48 is something like uh, 42 plus 48, 70, right? So now 80, I mean, my bad. Okay, so now, if you come here, you have another 32, right? So 100 and something. And here you can see we have two gig of RAM, all right? And two processor. So what does it mean is for me, right? We can make a sum, we can try to do a sum of all those processors, it's gonna be six. So I will recommend to get at least eight processor, all right? Eight processor and for the for the gigabyte for the ram uh, uh, at least eight as well okay at least eight and core i5 or core i7 for the for the the, uh, the disk storage i recommend at least 100 gigabyte based on what i see now let's go and take a look at those servers so if you double click on that, if you double click or you click here, show. Okay, normally it's supposed to come back and let go and, and fetch them. All right, so you can see it here, right? It is running. So they say to log in, we need to use the name, the, we need the username of Vagrant and the password as Vagrant as well. <clears throat> and here you can see the message that says server uh, system two, right? System two. And here are the uh, available repo, available repository from this server here. Okay. These are the available repo for, from the server that was built in behind the scene. All right. So if you want to use the, uh, the, the command as a root user, you use sudo. And that's it. So same thing for the repo. If we, we double click on that and we type Vagrant, we type Vagrant again. Yep, you can see a repo, right? This is the repo server. While you're here, you should be working on the system host. Anyway, try not to reboot me. Oh, bad stuff can happen. Yeah, because it's strictly related to the other servers. Now the other one, <clears throat> the other one, the server one. So if I log in as well, you see system one, right? And available repo for that system. So this is how our uh, environment will be, all right? So now, if you finish with your exam, you finish doing the exam and you come, for example, here, you will see additional, uh, additional stuff that uh, they, put, they put there. Yeah, that's still that guy. So if you come to the, the repo, you will see the additional stuff that they recommended, right? Like uh, how to interact with the environment. You can do vagrant of vagrant, different vagrant, vagrant command, like here. You can see here we have, <clears throat> you, you, know, you can reset, for example, if you worked on it and then you want to reset everything so that you can work from scratch again, without uh without killing the whole servers 
So you remember, you can type Ansible playbook and then you do this. For the Vagrant, this is the one that we use to boot up and provision the environment. Vagrant destroy will destroy all the servers and then you will have to start over again and it's gonna take another 15 to 20 minutes. Vagrant halt uh, will just shut down the server, right? And to bring it bring it up, you can type Vagrant, Vagrant up. Vagrant suspend, we just put it in a sustain, uh, suspended state. Vagrant resume will just resume it, right? Resume the suspended state. And here they recommend doing the git pull all the time from the <clears throat> from the directory where we we kill. Um, I mean we <laughs> we clone the the repository. So yep. And uh, I would say that's it. So yeah, all those servers. I would say that's it for my videos. Now, if you like what I did, please uh, consider subscribe, share, comment, like. Or dislike i really appreciate that and also check the description because i'm going to leave some uh, some of these links to you and all the, the other links that you can check and see how to to do to to do it on your own and uh, also um yeah happy new year again see you in the next video